All right, we will get going with this for today. Our first speaker. Um, you know, this whole this whole conference is supposed to be about people thinking about technology in new and interesting ways. And if you look at one of the companies right here in our backyard, Nike, and how they are working to make technology more accessible to everyday people, how they're humanizing technology, how people are making technology an inherent part of their lives. And, and one of the people who thinks about that day in and day out is a guy named Ricky Engelberg, who is gonna be our first speaker, and please, He's gonna, he's gonna um, present for a little while, but please take this chance to ask Ricky questions. If there's anything you want to know about, this is, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to have him here. I might wander up and ask questions, right. so. Thanks, Rick, thank you very much. No one watches, I awkwardly try to get on stage gracefully. Oh, there's stairs back there, lesson learned. Um, hey everyone, thank you so much, Rick, and uh, this space looks absolutely awesome. It's amazing to see it. Uh, huge thank to Rick and Mark. Uh, for putting this whole thing together. Um, my apologies in advance for a couple things. One, if I go way too fast, my apologies. Two, if my voice goes out, it was a very, uh, it's been a long few days already of uh, concerts. Um, and lastly, if I look awkward, I forgot my little clicker today, so it's gonna be me hitting buttons a lot. But um, can we switch over to uh, the presentation screen. Cool, thank you very much. Um, so as Rick said, uh, I'm Ricky Engelberg, Experience Director for Nike Plus, uh, inside the digital sport group at Nike. Been here in Portland, gosh, uh, first time I lived here was summer of 99, been in Portland now 10 years at this point. Um, long time listener. Um, and ex incredibly excited to be here to talk to you about uh, Nike Plus and what we've been doing with Nike Plus. So um, I'm assuming that a lot of you all are probably familiar with Nike Plus in some way or another. Uh, quick little show of hands to make me feel uh, hopefully not too bad about myself. Any Nike Plus users in the house? All right, at least a few. And not only a few of them were plants. Um, so uh, Nike Plus uh, started six years ago uh, as our collection of digital enabled products and services to make athletes better. And in a lot of ways, Nike Plus really began with the start of Nike and this founding, and even before this uh, founding of Nike. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Nike was uh, co-founded by Phil Knight uh, and Bill Bowerman. Bill Bowerman was uh, the track and field coach at the University of Oregon for an incredibly long time and one of the most interesting people in the history of sports. Because what made uh, Coach Bowerman so incredibly interesting was uh, he was just really ahead of his time. He, believe that nothing was ever finished, that it was always just the best version of a product at that exact moment. And he always wanted to make athletes better. He was constantly trying to remove weight from jerseys. He was constantly trying to remove weight from shoes. He, uh, a huge tinkerer, he uh, invented the waffle outsole just by pouring rubber onto uh, his family waffle iron to see what would happen. Um, but what's interesting about it was, as much as he was working with elite athletes, he also wanted to make sure that everyone enjoyed sports and that everyone had that opportunity uh, to be the best athlete they could be. And I'll come back to that in a second, but his view of an athlete was that if you have a body, you're an athlete. And so he actually wrote the book on jogging. Like, it's called Jogging. Um, he introduced jogging to the US uh, in I think the mid 60s. And if you ever go to the Nike store in Eugene, you actually see a copy of jogging. And you're like, wow, he really brought, like, because for him, it was about making people love sports and fall in love with this idea of being active. And that really exists as the core DNA of Nike today. And in a lot of ways, that's manifested itself in the amazing things we do for elite athletes. Things that we're able to do for a Kobe Bryant or a Manny Pacquiao or LeBron James, this idea that we're gonna have them work with us to get this unbelievable elite knowledge and elite access to go and make products that are fantastic for them. And that idea that if we hear the insights from them, we're able to then turn that into great products for everyone. And for those of you uh, here in Portland that have ever been to the Nike campus, you know the Nike campus, particularly in the summertime, is just this beehive of activity of unbelievable athletes coming in and using things like the Nike Sports Research Lab, the Innovation Kitchen. Um, I mean, every week you walk by and it's kind of like, well, there's Man U, there's Man City. And this idea that these top athletes all want to come here to come to the Nike campus to work with us to have knowledge and to help contribute knowledge to make products better. But um, being here in Portland, I'm sure a lot of you all had a chance to go to the Nike campus at some point or another. 
But for most people in the world, the idea of going to the Nike campus is not necessarily a reality. The idea of going and working with Alberto Salazar and your run or whatever the case may be. But the great thing about digital is that digital has given us a chance to actually take a lot of those different things that are once formerly just available to the elite athletes in the world and begin to make that coaching and understanding and knowledge be available to everyone. And that's something that we're just incredibly excited about because again, digital technology is working in our favor right now. The idea that uh, I look, when we look back at what a mobile phone was 15 years ago to what a mobile phone is today, they're basically unrecognizable other than the fact that they both have a screen on them. Um, and this idea that eventually technology is gonna constantly get more and more, uh, uh, how do I, uh, more and more invisible, which I know is a contradiction of words. Um, but this idea that eventually it gets so small that it becomes un, uh, unnoticeable and just enables you to go do what you need to go and do. And what that actually means is that all of a sudden, this constant connectivity, uh, the phone that's always talking to someone, the, the GPS that's always giving you the right location, gives us a chance to actually take those things and be, make them into the right motivation at the right time for everyone. And so the opportunity for us that we've been saying to people for years and years and years and years is just do it. But now for us, that chance is to actually say, hey, no, just do it more, just do it better than you might have done before, and hey, motivate your friends to go just do it. And that's something that's been incredibly exciting, this idea of how do you make just do it not just be this super elite rallying cry, but this thing that for everyone means today's the day that I'm gonna run, today's the day when I hit my best personal daily goal. And that idea that just do it has now almost in some ways become digitally enabled. So the first place that we went and really started to look at this idea of digital enablement of this idea is through Nike Plus Running. Nike Plus Running, as it launched six years ago, and it was this incredible uh, experiment that if we took this uh, sensor and begin to and put it into a shoe and had that sensor talk to an iPod Nano, what would people want to do with it? And that, that really, that partnership with Apple, this idea of uh, the sensor digitally enabling something that used to not be, the idea of this smart shoe all of a sudden, and talking to this thing that everyone had, the iPod Nano, made running be something that was forever changed. And what was interesting was, at the time, we thought it was that people were gonna love the idea of getting real-time feedback during the run, or holding on a button and getting a power song played to them to motivate them. But it turned out what people really loved was the data that was coming in, and the idea that data coming in being this uh, permanent representation of this formerly analog activity. This idea that me going for a gorgeous run in Forest Park, all of a sudden now is always gonna be remembered for this, uh, for this run curve, or now for this map of the run as we've added in things like GPS. And so but what I really began to love was, cool, my goal this month is to run 10 times, or I'm in a challenge against three friends from work. And this idea that all of a sudden, we found more and more people saying, I started running because my doctor told me to. And now all of a sudden, I love it, and I'm running my first half marathon, and I now am pushing myself to be the best runner I could possibly be. But what's been super interesting is, again, what was once just this sensor, a sensor in a shoe and a nano, like, well, the iPhone came out, and the iPhone had GPS, and all of a sudden there's this opportunity to say, hey, let's go and just make an app for this. Well, we're now, at, I think, over seven and a half million people as part of Nike Plus running at this point. Number one, uh, we were the number one paid, in, paid health and fitness app uh, in the app store uh, until June 21st, but we actually made the running app free. Um, and we actually now available on Android as well with it. And what it's done is just makes anyone that wants to have the right, the, the right motivation for running, it's incredibly simply available for them for free to go out there. And what's great about it is, uh, what I get so excited about is that it's not just recording your run, but it's also connecting to your friends. I'm sure uh, any of you all Nike Plus runners or anyone on Facebook or Path has probably seen at some point a friend say, post, I'm starting a run, please like this. And when you hit like, you get an audible, that, that friend gets an audible cheer when they're out running. Apparently I knocked down that with uh, my story. Um, so uh, this idea that um, your friend, your, your, it's not just you running alone with your headphones in. Now every friend around the world can like and cheer you on. And it's been incredibly exciting to see like, running be kind of revolutionized forever. That like, hundreds and hundreds of millions of miles later, people don't want to have running not be this connected experience. And at the same time, it's still the same basic act. Go out, run, find the best places to run, run with your friends, run a race. But it's now this connected experience that's incredibly, uh, even that much more exciting. So. Um, needless to say, pretty excited for what we do with Nike Plus Running, but not every person in the world defines themselves as a runner. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people have ended up in that scenario where it's like, 
I use Nike Plus running, but my friend that runs 75 miles a week just challenged me to a run. There's no way on earth I'm gonna accept that challenge because I'm just gonna lose. So uh, if you go back to the mission statement of the company, the mission statement of Nike is bring innovation and inspiration to every athlete in the world. And there's that asterisk on, there's an asterisk on athlete. And that asterisk is, the asterisk is what Coach Bowerman said, is if you have a body, you're an athlete. And so we sat back about two and a half years ago and said, we've got to figure out a way to give motivation to every athlete. Again, if you have a body, you're an athlete. So how do we create something that would allow that incredibly committed runner or a basketball player that's playing five times a week or someone loves tennis or someone who just loves being active all day, every day, how do we give them something that allows them to compete, compare, motivate against, uh, against and with themselves? And so we started kicking around this idea of Nike Fuel and this idea that how do we create one metric that is a measure of effort, a measure of how much you move, a measure of how active you are. And so let me uh, show you all a look at what Nike Fuel has become. Runners, walkers, basketball players, or break dancers. They all have one thing in common, Nike Fuel, the ultimate measure of activity, of sport, of commitment, of your entire athletic life, telling you more about yourself than you ever knew before. It isn't bought or sold, it's earned. From the moment you start moving, the more you move, the more you earn. Fuel is calculated the same way for everyone. So whoever you are, and however you move, we're all connected. Connected by Nike Fuel. So again, this idea that all of a sudden we can take on the somewhat ambitious task of creating something that becomes this conversational metric that motivates people. That if whether you're playing basketball or football or running, you could just say, hey, how much fuel do you have? What, how much fuel did you earn in that, in that dance class? How much fuel did you earn on that run? It doesn't replace the scoreboard of sports. It doesn't replace wins or losses. It doesn't replace miles run. It just becomes this another, uh, this an, another way for people to be more and more motivated. And again, that idea that this conversational metric is something that could hopefully motivate someone to actually find the motivation from the person that runs 75 miles a week, as opposed to being intimidated by it. You go, oh, that's how much fuel you earn. Who, why are that going and playing tennis or playing basketball? And so that's really that ambition of Nike Fuel, is to continue to push people forward, to be motivated to go and be a little bit more active. So again, we have Nike Plus running, we have this idea of Nike Fuel. Well, for us to make it work, we actually had to come up with something that was a device that was able to reach everyone to be able to track how active they are. And that's where we came up with the idea of the Nike Plus Fuel Band. And so, um, waiting for the dramatic animation. Um, so, uh, the Nike Plus Fuel Band we launched January 19th of, uh, this past, of this year, came out February 22nd, and it's been incredibly exciting um, to watch this thing come to life, to find people uh, all of a sudden have this scoreboard on their wrist that's pushing them to go and just do it a little bit more each day. So for me, I'm my fuel band on right now, the ice colorway, and I'm at 1,093 fuel right now, which for 10.30 in the morning is a pretty high score. But for me, again, was that tan lines last night? Came back around uh, 1.30 and was already at 600 for the day. And what's incredibly interesting about it is that all of a sudden, the idea of me going out to a concert late is actually the definition of being active. Pushing like, in any which way, it's beginning to make it, every choice you make, you have a, uh, it makes life into a sport in a lot of different ways. The idea of it all of a sudden is like, you know what? I can go for a run today, but I'm already at 3,000 fuel because I did this, this, and this. You still might go for a run. You might push yourself for the best day ever, but all of a sudden, everything counts. And that's something that we, our, our ambition of this was to make people understand that it's great to get up and go and work out in the morning first thing, but if you just go and sit at your desk the rest of the day and do nothing, then what good is that uh, in the scheme of things? What we found is all of a sudden when you put that scoreboard on your wrist, you find yourself pushing yourself to be active in different ways. And as cliche as it sounds, the idea of it's really tough to take the elevator when you have a thing on that's rewarding you for not taking the elevator. All of a sudden you find yourself walking to dinner way more than you've ever done before because you're like, well, I'm not at my goal. And it's very tough to watch Sports Center at 11.30 when you haven't hit your goal for the day and you're like, I could get up and hop on a treadmill for 20 minutes and hit my goal, or I could sit on the couch and watch Sports Center. The number of times people make that choice of, I'm gonna push myself to go do a little bit more, has uh, been incredibly exciting to see. And like I said, it's uh, uh, also, again, in that conversational space, I don't know if anyone in here has a fuel band, but typically what happens is after, uh, 
Uh, you check your fuel score, uh, we find that everyone else begins to check theirs to see how they're doing. Again, 1,112 for the scoring at home. Um, and so in addition to that, um, we wanted to make it become this thing that was uh, completely distractionless. Something incredibly wearable, something as iconic as a Lunar Glide or an Air Force One or a Jordan. This idea that this is sh it shouldn't be something that you're, uh, shouldn't be viewed as necessarily a health monitoring device, but rather it's just this awesome thing that you love having on because it's a watch as well, it connects seamlessly to your phone, it syncs to your computer, and it's incredibly wearable. It's made as if it was one of our top performance products. Seven day battery life, uh, built in USB for all the charging to happen right through USB, so no proprietary cables. And that was what was incredibly important to us is we wanted to make something that, though available for every athlete to wear, again, this idea, if you have a body, you're an athlete, we wanted an elite athlete to feel like, I could wear this, uh, no problem, in competition. And the first time we actually, uh, when we first came out with it, we started to see a couple NBA players wearing it. Then all of a sudden at the Olympics, uh, there was five gold medalists that actually wore it during competition, and which was mind-blowing to me, uh, watching a uh, long jumper from the UK go and win gold, wearing the fuel band, because obviously he found it to be something that had no distractions for him. But from a wearing it all day, every day, the only time I ever take this off is occasionally when I shower. Sometimes I just clean it in the shower. Um, but again, this idea that it's something you wear all day, every day, and fits seamlessly connected to your iPhone and to your computer. And what that allows that constant connection to do is it allows us to provide the right motivation at the right time. And so um, whether it be celebrating uh, through this delightful animated character, Fuely, um, or pushing yourselves on what are your daily best to what's your weekly best, the monthly best, uh, this idea of going out there and pushing yourself to go do more is what the Fuel Band's about. But again, we had a lot of thoughts and assumptions as to what the Fuel Band could be and would be. But what's been incredibly exciting for us is watching the response of people actually wearing the product. And uh, these are just a sampling of photos uh, from that people have sent to us or we've uh, seen online of people taking photos of them hitting their goal or people posting their best month. Uh, people uh, beginning to create things like just a midday fuel check. Uh, randomly got invited to a group the other day of a couple friends in LA. They're like, every day at like 12 and five, they just send their fuel score out to all their friends to make sure that people kind of are, moving, are pushing themselves a little bit. But this idea that we've created this platform that people are beginning to tell us what is a great fuel day, what's a good fuel day, and what really is an accomplishment and how do you keep pushing yourself. And again, for us, it's a lot of listening and how to make this more and more seamlessly integrated into people's lives. And it's been incredibly exciting. It's just the beginning for us. We have a lot of unbelievable things in store at the fuel band. But in this idea that uh, wearable technology becomes a seamless thing that just fits on your wrist and pushes you to go and be as active as you can be is an incredibly exciting thing for us. Because we know that again, a little bit of measurement can lead to a lot of motivation. So again, take a step back. We have Nike Plus running, we have Nike Plus Fuel, we have the Fuel Band, all of which uh, we think are great opportunities to motivate people to go and be more active um, using digital in ways hopefully never thought before. But um, one thing we know as well is that athletes across the board, elite athletes in particular, love measurement, uh, measurement of all different types. Um, all you have to do is watch Sports Center uh, any night and go into why when they're showing sports science, and you're like, wow, it is amazing how much information can be shared and how complex that information it can become over time. And so for us, one of the goals is to constantly try to simplify the noise of information coming in and be again make it be motivational for athletes. And one of the things we've been able to do uh, is really, get, if you take uh, think of the Nike campus and the sports research lab. We used to have these, uh, we still have these machines that are these uh, incredibly intense machines that have uh, PEDARs built into them, uh, like an old school printer ribbon cable coming out of it that goes to a computer with a guy with a massive amount of education that is working, uh, giving feedback in this. It's a $100,000 machine that only elite athletes are coming to get this real time feedback on their pressure maps and things of that nature that helps us develop great products for them, but also is able to give them feedback on how they're performing. Well, again, beauty of technology is always getting tinier and tinier. And so now we're at a place where uh, if you take something like the Nike Plus Hyperdunk 2012, we're actually able to put pressure sensors right into that shoe that are able to give every athlete or every, in this case, every basketball player, that same real-time feedback that used to be available only for people that were able to have access to the Nike Sports Research Lab. And what that feedback becomes is this opportunity to have this kind of real-time coach for you. 
um, you're able to get feedback of how high you jumped, which to a lot of people, uh, it's uh, since the dawn of basketball, people have been lying about their vertical jump. And now uh, this idea that we're actually to say, hey, no, this is how high you jump. But it's not just how high you jump, it's how high do you jump into first quarter, how high do you jump into fourth quarter. And this idea that all of a sudden these urban, uh, the urban legends of basketballs of like, oh, he lost his legs, begin to get proven out. When you see someone that's jumping out of the gym in the first quarter and in the fourth quarter they're not, it's a pretty quick uh, prescription to say, hey, you might need to work on some endurance. Uh, or hey, you might want to work on how you overall get managed the game. We can measure how hard you play. Again, through the idea of Nike Fuel, this universal measurement of how active you are, how much you push yourself, what we found out is that uh, it's actually an incredible measurement in a basketball game of how much you've actually put into the game. Um, five, uh, ten of us could go play full court basketball right now and we have uh, drastically different scores based upon how active, uh, drastically different fuel scores based upon how active we were on the court during the game. Um, and then lastly, how quick, these moments of bursts of quickness, someone breaking someone's ankles, this idea, metaphorically breaking their ankles. Um, so this idea that uh, these amazing point guards like a Russell Westbrook and how incredibly fast they are, that measurement begins to come through. And when you actually start to look at this uh, almost graphic equalizing the measurements, you get a great picture of not necessarily points, rebounds, and assists, but how someone plays the game and what they can go and work on to improve their game. And so when we started developing Nike West basketball, we had a lot of raw measurements that we could do. We went and worked with people like Coach Krzyzewski at Duke um, and sat down with him and he's like, you know, I got eyes and ears, I got the best coaching staff in the world. Is like, what I wanna know is I wanna be able to measure someone's heart. I wanna know on a Tuesday when I say that I want to practice to be a game speed, that they're actually practicing a game speed. I wanna know who's putting in their work in the off season. I wanna know when they go and play pickup at the gym in the off season, that they're actually playing at game speed. And so this idea that all of a sudden, uh, this is becoming this incredible coaching tool. Well, when we talked to someone like LeBron James on it, started working with him on it, and he's like, you know what I really uh, want from this? He's like, what I love about it is, I wish I was 14 again. Like, the idea that we could go to the courts and we have our phones with us and be able to say, oh, you jumped this high. At the end of this game, uh, this is how much you actually, how you actually played. And so this idea that this completely connected mobile experience emerged from that. And so again, you take those sensors in the shoes and you put a three axis accelerometer and Bluetooth uh, low energy in it. And all of a sudden the shoes are talking in real time to your phone, sending your game data over after each game right to your mobile phone. And so again, you have two ends of the spectrum. You have Coach K, best coach in the world saying, I wanna measure someone's heart. And you have LeBron saying, I wanna see how high, I, I wish I was 14, I wanna see how high I could jump. I wanna have dunk contests with my friends using these shoes. And so that's actually where one of the ideas came from, the idea of showcase mode, where you can actually just record a video um, and that superimposes the stats in real time on the video, uh, and then you post the video directly to YouTube. And the first one that was done uh, with this was a dunk contest we had in LA. And the video ended up having like three million views. The dude did a somersault dunk that was one of the most like tear-inducingly amazing dunks uh, ever done. Um, I recommend anyone that likes basketball to go check it out, because, uh, it's pretty amazing. So again, that's Nike Plus basketball. Again, this idea of taking technology and trying to make it so that it seamlessly blends into your basketball shoes. It doesn't change the fabric of the game. It just gives you more information than you've ever had before to help you go and get better, to actually go and solve the problems that you as a basketball player might have had that you didn't realize you had. And that's something we're incredibly excited about at just the beginning stages. I mean, I look at where we are with Nike Plus running today versus where we were six years ago. I can't wait to see where we are with things like Nike Plus basketball six years from now. So again, but for us, like I can make reference to the idea that all of a sudden we actually have this opportunity with this information to help make people better. It's not just about giving them information, but it's about helping them go and become better. And that's where the idea of Nike Plus training came, in, uh, came to life for us. And so, uh, there's one thing we as a company know a ton about, it's how the foot works. Um, it's kind of our thing. Um, and so uh, what's interesting is we found that every, pretty much every unique uh, athletic activity has a unique footprint to it. And when you're able to go and put, uh, when you're able to go put four pressure sensors and, and three axis accelerometer into uh, a shoe, what you're able to actually do is get an actual, a pretty accurate indication of what that footprint actually is. 
and you're able to actually begin to see all these different activities that begin to happen. So here's a, a thing of Rafa Nadal uh, doing mountain climbers. Pretty basic activity. But what you actually see is each time that his shoe uh, hits the, his foot hits the ground, just the tips of his toes, there's a unique pressure map that's registering for it. And so that unique pressure map actually is able to all of a sudden serve as not just a rep detector, but able to give you real-time feedback on the level of intensity that you're actually doing that exercise at and begin to give you a score for that actual workout. And so for us, the opportunity of how do we take technology and make it come into training is how do we actually make training not feel like working out, but rather make it into a game? And it's uh, been incredibly interesting for us to see because um, the first time when we started working, it was like, oh, great, here's some cool information. We can measure reps. And you're like, hey, you know what? Most people can count. They can measure reps themselves. And then all of a sudden, you go and put a scoreboard onto uh, the measurement. And you say, take something like jump rope. I assume a lot of people in here have probably gone to the gym before and gone and done cardio and been like, all right, 20 minutes on the bike. I'm going to read People Magazine, phone this in, um, and get done with this. Or you're just like, all right, jump rope. You're in elementary school. You're doing jump rope. And it's like, two minutes of jump rope. What we found all of a sudden was when we put a scoreboard on jump rope, something as simple as jump rope and said, hey, two points for two inches, four points for four, six points for six inches, and actually gave points for how high off the ground you got while doing jump rope, it all of a sudden turned jump rope into a video game, basically. And that last 10 seconds of a 30 seconds of jump roping was way more intense than the first 10 seconds because you were trying to push yourself to have a high score. You're trying to push yourself next to you, push yourself to beat the person next to you. And so all of a sudden this idea that we could take something like training and working out and make it into the feeling of game day became a reality. It was something we couldn't be more excited about. And so we, uh, along with Nike Plus basketball, we launched Nike Plus training on June 29th. Um, and it's just been incredibly exciting to see the idea of, again, take the world's best personal trainers, take the unbelievable things that we've been, how we've been training athletes for years and years and years, and make those athletes actually become the trainers for you, whether it be Manny Pacquiao on power, or LeBron on endurance, or Allison Felix on quickness. This idea of these high intensity game-like challenges served up to you on a daily basis with a scoreboard applied to it to make it into this feeling of game day is what we think in a lot of ways the future of training could be like. This idea that, again, you're always pushing yourself to go and be the best you can be, but also making it so that it's not like you're going to a gym and you're just blindly trying to figure out what you might want to do. And maybe you've read something in uh, a magazine of a workout you want to try, or you looked up something on YouTube, but now all of a sudden, the thing that you, it's a pretty safe guarantee you have shoes on when you're going to go work out uh, in a lot of cases. Now those shoes can actually talk to your phone and give you the real-time instruction you might need to get back in shape, to become a better athlete than you've ever been before, uh, or to just fit in a quick workout because you only have 13 minutes before heading off to work. So this idea that these quick game-like challenges uh, packaged together as these workouts is something uh, again, I'm incredibly excited to see how people take to them and uh, begin to learn and evolve from there. But essentially what we're able to do is give everyone a personal trainer. And a personal trainer was able to say to you, do you want to have a beginner workout, intermediate or advanced? And then it'll map out for you the proper uh, workouts for you to do for that week, whether it be the high intensity packs or more of the game-like challenges uh, and push people through it. And it's been, again, um, a little, uh, uh, I had a friend who actually uh, um, got sick a few months ago uh, with double pneumonia and uh, couldn't work out for like six weeks. And he got the shoes and he just posted yesterday to Instagram a photo of his first month back of being able to exercise, of him having done a pack every day. And you just see the month progression um, you see the month progression of his fuel score increasing as he got, found himself getting back in shape after taking two months off from exercise. And it was incredibly exciting to see uh, because it was something that, for him, he was nervous to hop back in, but it started with beginner. He did that, and then he worked his way up to intermediate, and all of a sudden you see this picture, uh, this screenshot of his phone that he posts. You're like, wow, this is working, this idea that you're earning more and more fuel in that 10 minutes, in that 13 minutes. And so it's incredibly exciting for us and something uh, we'd love to have any of you all try. Actually, Nike Portland, we have a demo set up um, of uh, where you can test out the shoes and begin to see what a pack is like. So highly recommend it to anyone. So, and one more thing to talk about is, for us, it's not just about our shoes or getting people to, uh, um, or having the fuel band. We're also looking into other technologies that exist that are already in people's living rooms. So, one other thing that we have coming out later on this year is Nike Plus Connect training, which uh, the first time we saw the Connect sensor, we're like, this is pretty amazing. Like, this thing has so much incredible potential. Um, and that was, I guess, when it was called Natal, way, uh, way, way back when. And 
we started working with Microsoft, uh, with Xbox, to say how do we actually go and take, create essentially the best personal trainer in the world that can actually have a full body assessment of you and understand your exact personal needs. And so we've been working on this the past few years with Xbox and I'm incredibly excited for it to come out because again, for us, the more we can do to make anyone in the world, whether you live in Portland or Chicago or Singapore, have access to the best training minds possible is what our ambition is. We want no one to be like, if only I had the guidance, then I could be great. We want to eliminate that from the equation. And so things like Nike Plus Training, things like Nike Plus Connect Training, the ambition of them is to make sure that everyone has access to the world's best trainers to try to push them to be the best that they could possibly be with whatever the definition of best is for them. And so one of the things we're incredibly excited about is uh, this thing called the Fuel Prince, which actually um, is an incredible benchmark of your, uh, just how in shape you are at that moment. And from there, it's in a lot of ways, it's a new scale. Uh, rather than just check it, stepping on a scale once a week or once a month and saying, this is how much you weigh, the idea that you can actually go and do this quick seven minute assessment uh, once a month and actually see your progress and understand, are the workouts that I'm doing actually paying off for me? Is my running plan paying off for me? Whatever the case may be. But that idea that, uh, again, fr trying to democratize this idea of access to the best trainers in the world and make it available for everyone, we're incredibly excited for it. Again, uh, coming late, later this year, can't wait for you all to uh, test that out. So with that, uh, I'll stop my rambling. Um, Nike Plus has been a big few years for us and it's just the beginning. We've Brought, to get, brought a lot of people to Portland to be part of this. Um, and it's been incredibly exciting to build out this team that's focused on, again, creating digital enabled products and services to make athletes better. And we had support for us. We look at things like the Fuel Band, the Nike Bus Training, and Connect Training, and Nike Bus Running as just being the beginning. Like, it's uh, the idea that uh, technology is going to slow down in any which way is. Uh, for us, it's just nothing but opportunities ahead, and we have to sort through them each day. But we know that things like Nike Fuel are there to help motivate and push athletes, and incredibly excited to uh, hopefully be able to work with a, uh, a lot of people to go and make this be great. So with that, I uh, will come to a pause and pass it over to you all for any questions. No pressure. Oh, I don't like blue. Okay, there you go. And, um, the the uh, music, the LCD sound system, they yep. are so that's related to the Plus, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, sport music was a really big part of Nike Plus uh, when we began it, and so things like 4533, uh, which we did at LCD, was unbelievable awesome, and I think for us, what we found was in a lot of cases, people began to create their own mixes and share their own mixes, um, and so the idea of uh, things like the Power Song are still a core part of uh, Nike Plus running, yeah. uh, the idea of uh, how do you get the right song at the worst part, at the part where you need a big push, how do you get the right song? And so, and again, I think for us, we view music as a big avenue of motivation for athletes. Do you still curate, like, have uh, artists? Uh, at this point, uh, we haven't done that for a bit, because again, I think for us, we, we know that uh, people love to run to their own music, and as much as, personally, I love 4533, a lot of people are able to go in and make their uh, best possible mix themselves. And so right now, uh, we haven't done that in a bit, but uh, always possibilities. Yeah, I, I was just a music fan and that was, that was exciting. Cool. That came out. Uh, I appreciate that, it was a lot of fun. Also, I should give credit to Crystal Method, ASAP Rock, and, uh, <laughs> but I'm a LCD nerd, so. Uh. Hi, um, so one thing that's really interesting to me about Fuel Band is that it seems like you're as much in looking at human behavior and motivation as anything in this. And I was just wondering, as you guys were testing this, if there were things that came up that surprised you about the way that um, you know your test group reacted to things, or hmm. you know, because one of the things that one of my friends said when I got mine is, "Well, can't you just shake it a bunch of times and earn a bunch of fuel?" Well, and I said, "Well, you're missing the point. Nike can't stop you from lying to yourself." Well, I think I think. Uh, you raise a good point. Um, what's interesting is whenever anyone's like, well, can't you just sit there and just pump your arm in the air for five minutes? Like, sure, go and do it. Like, and after 45 seconds, someone's like. Um, and so for us, again, uh, at a certain point, inevitably with a lot of products, there's going to be people that try to figure out ways to uh, work around it. But we've found with things like Fuelbin that in a lot of cases, uh, where Fuelbin is at its best, in my opinion, is the idea of how, uh, how much did you move on a macro level throughout the day. In an individual session, there's always going to be things like a GPS sport watch is 99% accurate uh, when measuring your run. 
But if you forget to turn your sport watch off when you get in the car, it becomes zero percent accurate pretty quickly. But the fuel band is the idea of wearing it all day, every day, is the idea of in total, how much did you move throughout the day? And you're gonna have sessions and moments and peaks throughout that. But for us, it's pretty tough to it's pretty tough to fool how active you've been on a day over day basis. And so I think what's been interesting uh, is how quickly um, people under make value of fuel to themselves. They know that, uh, that weekends are higher for them because they're with their kids all weekend running around like crazy. And they might find that they have different moments in time where they know they're gonna have a good day or a bad day. And very quickly you just begin to understand the context of fuel as it relates to you versus yourself. And I think that's something that's been uh, incredibly exciting for us to see is how quickly people have been able to understand what is good fuel days for them and bad fuel days for them. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, someone's running up. Not all at once. <laughs> well, actually, I was at Nike in the 90s and worked for Andy Mooney in the early days of the equipment division. Cool. And I proposed uh, networking treadmills to run virtual races. Uh, too early, I think, in the day. But uh, is there a plan for kind of some real-time networking through Nike Plus where you can run against people in different cities at the same time? Well, I mean, what's interesting for us is you take something like Cheer Me On and the idea of when you start a run and have it be broadcast out to Facebook or Path, this idea of getting that real-time feedback from your friends has been incredibly exciting for us. Challenges have been a part of Nike Plus. Uh, for a, a, since day one, um, and it's been incredibly exciting to see the way people take the challenges and missions and begin to compete. And you know, look at things like we did with the human race uh, in 2008, where we had, had 800,000 people run around the world yeah. that day using Nike yeah. Plus. And so I think in different forms it's happening. Yeah. Uh, the one-to-one -one networked head-to-head, -head, uh, there actually was interesting, Nike Plus Connect Training uh, you, uh, has a lot of very fun, incredibly connected pieces to it that are about uh, connecting you with a workout buddy around the world or competing in real time that we can't wait for people to be able to start playing with. Okay, cool. Yeah, and one thing I also really appreciate the translation of the um, Nike Plus running miles to fuel points when it came out because that all of a sudden I had a gigantic amount of fuel points because of all my Nike Plus running. So that was that was a great cool. experience. Yeah, much appreciated. Hi, I'm Peter, and I'm curious your story about how you thought that Nike Plus would be about sort of the geekery of running and results, but how people really latched onto the social element of it? Well, I, I, mean, I think it's less about how it was gonna be about pure data. And I think for us, what was interesting was watching it almost go from, hey, we wanted to make an incredibly simple connected running experience where we thought music and a little bit feedback were gonna be a big portion of motivation. What we found was that people actually, though they loved the music in a lot of ways, it was that, the artifact of the run, the data, that began to become uh, incredibly valuable to a lot of people. Then from a, on differing scales, someone that's an elite runner wants to have split times and wants to have all these different things that um, involves obviously data analysis, but what we found is other people just became healthily addicted to, I wanna make sure I have three green bars each week. I need to get my, like this data for me is green bars equals success. And so over time, the accumulation of the months getting higher, the idea that the bars stack up month after month became people becoming, uh, all of a sudden beginning to slowly fall in love with what that data represented and understood was improvement. And they all of a sudden knowing that times can drop, you can run more and things of that nature. And so in a lot of ways, uh, that then turned into people being proud of their runs, sharing it and getting social motivation coming from it. And so I think it's been a pretty interesting, interesting thing for us. I mean, the numbers of people uh, it's, we're almost at a point where people sharing that they're starting a run or sharing the end of their run socially is more the norm than the exception um, for Nike Plus running at this point. And so I think in a lot of cases, it's a comfort level with data that's begun to happen um, and then that different tier depth to data so that if someone wants to go deep into their data, they can, but if they really just want to be able to, and that's something that we've done through to access for other API partners that want to be able to go deep with the data. For us, it's making sure that people understand that they have an accurate record of what they've done and how they're able to then use that as motivation to go forward. So that's awesome, and I was wondering if you could talk about the, the things you've seen uh, similar to that with Fuel. Like, I love how it's less geeky and it's, and it's somewhat simplistic, but how people have latched onto that. Have you seen um, behaviors like I mean, that? I think it's, uh, uh, let me check the time. 
Um, okay. Uh, so, oh, sorry, we're out of time, everyone. Um, no, I think for fuel, it's been. Uh, I have a short, a smaller sample size at this point, but what we're finding, as you saw with that uh, slide, is like people are beginning to uh, prescribe meaning to it. And one of the things we've done, and I'll try to show it horribly on my phone right now, um, is. Uh, um, so this is my uh, uh, fuel score posted to PATH. Everyone look closely. Uh, and so what's interesting about it is as I go over this, uh, you actually begin to see my check-ins last night, videos posted, photos posted. So what we're trying to do is actually begin to give uh, context to what makes your fuel spike throughout the day. And so that partnership with PATH's been a really interesting one because we're taking PATH, the journal of your life, and merging with the fuel day to begin to let people, uh, to begin to explore more and more with, uh, with that. We see other things um, without going uh, too far into the weeds. Different cities have different average fuel scores just based upon the way cities are uh, created and uh, just the way cities exist. If you're a commuter city, then you're probably gonna have a lower fuel score than if you're a walking city. Um, I mean, New York is a place where, I mean, uh, just personal anecdote. I have um, a lot of friends that live in New York from both friends and from work. And my leader, we have a leaderboard inside Nike Plus uh, that's just to keep track of how you're doing today and versus the week against your friends from Facebook. My week is, my leaderboard's dominated with friends from New York because there's just a lot more walking built naturally into that city than in other cities. And for me, like, I have a really easy commute. I drive from North Portland to Beaverton and then back each day. That's not me taking the subway and then walking eight blocks. And so just that natural, uh, that natural change city to city causes some interesting things. But again, we're in the super early stages on a lot of it, um, but it's just incredibly exciting to see. And a lot of it's just you start to see the personal anecdotes of how your friends use it and watching your friends improve um, and push themselves has been, uh, it's been, it's been incredible to see. Uh, potentially time for, I defer to Rick. Yeah, yeah, I think we're, I think we're at time. Cool. So thank you very much, Rick. Thank you all very much.